At one time, you were in love with your spouse and your spouse was in love with you. But right now, you might be so confused because all of a sudden, your spouse is no longer in love with you. They want out. They are disconnected. They're disengaged. They might even be disappeared for now. They might be gone. And you're thinking, is it really possible? Can I really get my spouse to come back? And how? How can I get someone to come back who doesn't want to be here? How can I get someone to fall in love with me who doesn't love me anymore? Is it possible? And the answer is yes, it is possible. My name is Kimberly Holmes. I'm the CEO at Marriage Helper. And over the past 20 years, the people and the staff and the team at Marriage Helper has done courses and seminars and trainings that over 250,000 people have attended. And we have seen marriage after marriage after marriage saved. For our workshops for marriages in crisis that we have, we have a 77% success rate at those marriages being saved. So we know how to save marriages. And we believe that any marriage can be saved. And we believe that any person can be rescued. It's all about knowing what to do and knowing what not to do. So in this video, I'm going to teach you the seven things that you need to be sure that you know to do and not to do in order to save your marriage and bring your spouse back, even if right now they completely want out. Here's the thing. This stuff really does work. We've seen it work with thousands and thousands of people, but it's not a guarantee. I'm not going to be one of those people who says, buy this $47 program and I guarantee your spouse is going to come running back after you. It's not like that. We're going to teach you these things for you to learn, for you to implement. First of all, I'm teaching you them now, here, free. You can start doing these things today. And if anything works, our guarantee is that these things will work. This isn't comprehensive, but this is absolutely enough to get you started, to get you going, and to get you on the right track. So without further ado, let's start with number one. When your spouse wants out and you feel like there's no hope for your marriage, a lot of times it can be easy to want to give up. A lot of times we can look at our friends' marriages, our parents' marriages, other people that we know, and we can see how all of them ended in divorce, so why should ours be any different? Maybe we should just settle for the fact that our marriage is doomed, it's over, and there's nothing we can do. It can be so easy to give up, especially when you have friends, counselors, therapists, even pastors who might be telling you that there's no hope for your marriage and it's over. Here's the thing. They don't know what we know at Marriage Helper, which is your marriage can be saved. You don't have to give up, especially not before giving it your all, giving it the last fighting chance that you have, as we like to say. We believe that there can be hope for your marriage, so don't give up, especially don't give up without giving this a try. Number two, when you're in a situation like this where your spouse wants out, a very natural reaction that we have as humans is to try and get our spouse to stay. If someone that we love is about to leave us, then our natural reaction is to cling, to do everything we can to try and convince them to stay, to not let them go out the door figuratively or literally. And that's something that's born in us as children. You see kids do that often when they are starting to realize what separation is from their mom or from their dad and how they interact with that. And it works as kids and it's a way that ingrained in us to try and make sure that we feel safe. But as we get older, it doesn't work as adults. When we start to cling, when we start to beg, when we start to plead, it can actually push further away the person that we're wanting to stay. So you don't want to do those things. Number three, you also don't want to let your spouse call all the shots right now. You see, opposite of the one we just talked about, if you just concede to everything your spouse says because you're scared of them getting angry, you're scared of them getting mad, they already want out, so you just want to make them happy so that maybe they'll end up coming back, that's not the way to do this either. Be sure that you are being strong for yourself. Don't just become a doormat where you do everything your spouse says to do, even if you don't agree with it. If they're wanting you to uh, do something maybe financially or anything like that that you don't feel comfortable with, you don't have to do it. 
There's a way that you can stand your ground without coming across as mean or as rude or anything like that. We call it being strong and calm and gentle. We talk about these principles in many of our other YouTube videos, so be sure to subscribe and look through our playlist where we have so much more information on exactly how you can implement those things. Number four, you do want to stand strong and find support. When you're in this situation, it can feel very lonely. Like there's nowhere to go, there's no one to turn to because maybe the people you have turned to have told you you're crazy for wanting to stay in a situation like this. Or maybe the people you have talked to about it have been really judgmental of you or maybe you're just embarrassed and all of that is completely understandable. It's so important in this time for you to find a strong support system. At Marriage Helper, if you call us and talk to us, we can guide you to some of our support groups that we personally run and have on Facebook that are private and closed that you can join and be a part of. We would love to provide that support for you because it is so crucial during this time. Number five, you also want to work on yourself during this time. See, if your spouse wants out and and they're out doing whatever they're doing that they're wanting out because of maybe it's an affair, maybe they're just not happy anymore, uh, maybe there's been just a lot of negative things that have happened in your marriage, a lot of fights, a lot of things that have been left unresolved that have ended up pushing them out the door. Whatever that might be, this is a great time for you to take advantage of working on you working on you physically, intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually. At Marriage Helper, we call it the pies. I go much more in depth on those in some of the other videos that we have on our YouTube channel. So be sure to check those out after you watch this video because it's gonna guide you through how you can work on yourself to become the most attractive that you can be during this time. At Marriage Helper, we have a saying that people don't leave what they have unless they believe what they're going to is better. Now, that's not to say that that's necessarily true. It could be that your spouse is going to be alone. Maybe they're not going to another person. But the principle is people, there's something that's drawing them away. And it might not be something that you have done, but you do get the opportunity to become the better. Because ultimately, you want to be that person who when your spouse wants to finally come back home, that they see that you are the better. They wanna leave what they have out there and they wanna come back to you because you are the better. So keep that key in mind. Number six, you want to forgive. You may not feel like forgiving and I completely understand. There's probably things your spouse has said or done that has hurt you immensely during this time. But if you continue to hold grudges or you continue to let these things harbor anger within you, then it's going to change the way that you feel about your marriage. It's going to change the way you feel about your spouse and it's going to change the way that you interact with your spouse that could ultimately end up pushing them away. You forgive for you. You're not forgiving because you're saying that you're in agreement or you approve of anything that your spouse is doing, but you forgive because it frees you. So you want to keep that in mind during this time as well. And then finally, number seven, you want to stop doing the things that are destroying love in your marriage during this time. If you've been doing any of them, if you've been controlling in the past, if you've been someone who just constantly nags, if you've been someone who tells your spouse they need to change something about themselves before you'll love them, whether you actually said that in your words or just in your actions, those things don't harbor love. It's not an environment where love can grow and love can foster. So during this time, as you're working on yourself, as you're not uh, overwhelming your spouse by begging or pleading or any of that, you're working on becoming a better spouse. Work on becoming a better wife. Work on becoming a better husband right now. Because then when your spouse does come back, it makes the process of putting your marriage back together so much easier. I cannot emphasize this enough. You absolutely can learn to fall in love again. It's absolutely possible. We've seen marriages in situations, I'm sure just like yours, that have been at the end 
where everyone believed that they would or should divorce, that they weren't meant to be together, however else you want to put it. And we've seen those marriages saved, but it's a process. And the seven things that I've shared with you at the beginning of this video is the first part of that process. You don't need to be worrying about how you're going to reconcile right now or anything like that. The first thing and really the only thing that you need to be focusing on right now are what you can do to soften you, to soften your situation, to soften your outlook on your marriage, to strengthen your resolve and to work on yourself. Then when your spouse starts coming back around, then we'll go to that next step. We'll start talking about how do you reconcile? How do you do that part? But that's not where you are right now. Focus on where you are now. Get the work done that you need to get done in you, in your interactions, and in forgiving your spouse and being able to move forward because you are going to need that no matter what happens going forward. This is just a brief overview of what you can do. If you want to know more about this, then comment below. Let us know how we can expand on things, how we can further help you. Or you can contact us at marriagehelper.com. You can read more of our articles, more of the resources that we have there for free. Or you can call us at 866-903-0990. And we'd love to tell you more about our workshop that has a 77% success rate at saving marriages or our marriage coaching or individual coaching that we have. No matter what your situation is, we believe there's hope for you and we believe that we can help.